Good morning. It is Thursday, January 4th. And if you read my newsletter yesterday, um, time to buy SQQQ, and I put a question mark in there. Wasn't sure. Uh, I put three charts in here. Here are the charts. This is a, a chart in the four hour algorithm. I said we've lost confirmation, and the algo will most likely get you out, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I then put a daily chart in there, seeing a gap at 378 to 382, which may provide some downside once filled. Um, this is in QQQ, uh, and this one is in QQQ as well. Uh, and then I went to a QQQ on a weekly, and it's all pointing towards downside. So what I looked at the the, the chart that I put in SQQQ last week, and I said I'm just waiting for confirmation. Well, here's your confirmation. It is above the nine day. It actually got it on January 2nd, the first day. I just didn't buy it. Wish I would have bought it at 1380. I got it around 1450 in pre market. We're at 1477. Actually, market just opened up. So you can see we still have confirmation. We're just crossing that, that 50 day. If we cross that 50 day and that 50 day starts to turn, we actually have a significant turnaround. And I think you're looking at probably these volume shelves at about 1550 or so to take. I, I put it, I think I put, uh, bought, uh, what, about eight, nine thousand dollars in here. Uh, my hope is to put about twenty thousand dollars into this, uh, take a quick, quick profit. I don't want 10%. I'm not looking at 10% because I do think the long term of this is a significant, um, you know, you're gonna lose money. Just going short in SQQ, you're going to lose money. So I want to get in. I want to get out. My stops will be pretty tight. Uh, I'm not going to do it on an hourly basis. I'm going to do it on this four hour. Right now, I've got a little bit of gain, um, uh, You know, not huge, but I will be putting more in. Uh, I do like this one to, to get above that 50 day. I like it to get it to about 16 and then start to see a pullback. If you're not subscribed to the newsletter, this is the kind of stuff that I put in there. I put all these charts in there. I, I, I It's all free. Dailystockpick.substack.com. Uh, I do have a, a weekend paid newsletter that provides you a little more education, and I'll put a little bit more reasons why and a few more charts. Um, and typically, I'll guide you on long-term trades that I'm doing, nothing like a day trade. This is more of what I call a swing trade. This is something that I probably will not hold on a Friday. So I will probably get out on Friday and then get back in on Monday. Um, that That's my way to treat these triple levered ETFs. I just don't like holding them. Uh, one reason that we're seeing, a, well, not a reason, but a reaction um, to uh, the, the, the turnaround here is just stocks that have been not loved last year. XLV hit an all-time, it hit a 52-week high. If we go over here to... Um, uh, to Seeking Alpha, and we look at XLV, uh, you can see these sliders over here. And I use these sliders on the right-hand side. You can see the day range and the 52-week we, week range. Uh, healthcare is right here. It's at its high. So is it going to go higher? Not sure. Maybe. Uh, financial services, at its high. What's pulled back? Consumer staples. Um, utilities. Utilities was way down here, cl close to 50 um, and you're trading in the 60s right now. So you can use these sliders to say, okay, where do I have an opportunity? What's trading at the, at the high? Right now, financials are taking off. Today, you're up 0.75%. You can see the indices right here. Uh, look at these 52-week ranges. S&P close to the top. Dow Jones close to the top. NASDAQ close to the top. So it's no reason I wanted to short. That's why you look at these kind of things. Um, and Seeking Alpha is just a perfect, perfect place to look at it. Now, Dan Niles, uh, if you don't know him, he's a hedge fund guy. Uh, I really like his picks, and he's on CNBC a lot. Uh, he, here's the interview link. I will include this link in my newsletter. It's a link to his CNBC interview where his top five picks for 2024 are uh, Amazon, Meta, Texas Instruments, XBI, KWeb. 
I'm not a hundred percent on his picks for the year, but I do like his reasoning. And and what you'll notice, and this is why I say, do not trust a douche on the internet. Well, Dan is not a douche on the internet. When you look at this, he gives out his reasons for each one. And if you go to his Twitter, he will post reasons for each one. Here's the K-Web. Here's the XBI. Here's the Texas Instruments. Here's the Meta Platforms. Um, and here's Amazon. And he gives you reasons why. Understand, that's not a douche on the internet. He is giving you his opinion. He doesn't know if they're going up or down. He just says, hey, here's our top picks. And, and he's putting his money where his mouth is. He's talking his book, uh, Satori Fund. But I do like him. And I, I like this list. So go and read that. I won't post the charts, but if you want me to chart it, comment down below. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify, you can leave a comment down below if you want me to chart one of these. Um, or you can get in, in contact with me on any of the social platforms. Any of the social platforms, they're all up here on the link tree. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Daily Stock Pick. Uh, you can sign up for Trendspider, Seeking Alpha, Weeble. I was just in the discussion on YouTube. I have two brokerage accounts. I have Fidelity for my big account because they do provide brokerage services. Weeble does not provide as big brokerage services as Fidelity. So, uh, But I do like trading on Weeble. So I've got about 4000 bucks in uh, Weeble. I really, really like it. So I won't downplay it. But the app is why I do it. If you want to put some money in, um, I started last year with $1,000. I really just wanted to experience it. I really liked it. Um, and I, I've been trading it ever since. Uh, I like it more than Robinhood just because I can get my money in and out of there much easier. And I don't know if Robinhood is still like that. But it, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that uh, I had easy access to my money. So I transferred in and transferred out. Here is the four-hour on SQQQ, so you know. Uh, we opened up at 1484. Right now, we are uh, trading at 1477. So it's on its way down. Maybe the NASDAQ's coming back. I don't expect it to. I expect it to bounce around here. But overall, I expect this week to be down. I don't think 1450 is going to make a killing, but I do like this for a certainty trade. Um, now, let's talk about some other ones. Apple. There was Deepwater uh, Asset Management made a prediction that Apple's going to buy Peloton. This one makes sense. I will include this link to this article uh, in 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 um, in the newsletter, and you can watch the video. It totally makes sense. Apple Fitness is a freaking joke. I don't like it. Uh, I've used both Peloton and Apple Fitness. Peloton by far is a superior product. This is up ten percent today. Most likely on this news, uh, because it, the, the actual acquisition of Peloton would not be a bank breaker for, uh, for Apple at all. Here's the thing about buying a, a company. If you're just going to buy this just because Apple is rumored to buy it, probably not a great reason. If you haven't used a Peloton bike, if you don't like a Peloton bike, if you think they're overpriced, Probably not a great reason to get in here. You do have a gap up here to $6.80. I would guess that they would buy it for somewhere in the neighborhood of $10 a share, which would double your money. If you look at this is just a dead weight stock. Understand, Peloton is still expensive. They are not making money. Well, let me see if they, they no, they're losing a billion dollars and they don't have a lot of cash on hand. They have less than a billion dollars of cash on hand. They may need to, to dilute, but they may be looking to sell as well. They're down 7% year to date. You're in the fourth day of the year and they're down 7%. But today they're up 8.5%. So it, it, short term, it may make sense to put some money in here, you may put some lunch money in here. You know, make a couple hundred bucks every now and then, but I don't think long term the short. I would put your stop loss probably if you're trading it right now and you're buying it at five eighty five. I would probably put your stop loss at about five thirty nine. Uh, let's see where it opened up. I would put your stop loss at five thirty one. That's where the current candle is. So that's how volatile this one may be. I'd just look at maybe uh, you know maybe even on the sixty five minute algo. Let's see about on the sixty five minute algorithm where Peloton is. It's got you out. It'll probably get you in right now. Uh, you know, when it crosses up on the eight day, it's up on the nine day. So it's probably going to get you in the, ne the next candle. So 590 might not be a bad buy. 
You might be going up here to 629. Not a bad scalp play at all, I don't think. But I'll include that article about um, Apple buying them. Apple also just got downgraded by Piper Sandler. Um, we can see it's down another 1.29%. Algo got you out up here at 193. That's where you should have been trimming. That's where you should. We talk about button hooks all the time. The button hook up here was clear as day. I was trimming in the 190s, even if you didn't get out in the 190s. I think the high 180s was good. Now, you've created a gap here between 191 and 188. That will get filled at some point in time. This one is becoming extremely over, oversold. The RSI is at 20. Look at that MACD just going down. If you get down into the 170s, you've covered this gap down to 185. Right now, you're playing with that 200-day. If we look at what everybody looks at on Wall Street, which is the daily, the 200 day is at 179. If you break that 200 day, I will tell you, just start buying it. Just start loading up because this is this is the safe money. Uh, you know, your problem, you may be going back down here to 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 double fill this gap at 166, but start dollar cost averaging your way in here. The thing about Apple is as it becomes oversold, you're gonna start to see buyers start to show up. Doesn't mean that this one's going to back to 200 anytime soon, but later this year, I don't think it's, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility that it goes back. But again, they got downgraded. If we look over here on Finviz and we go to Apple, the PE is 29, the forward PE is 25. That's expensive for a company that has declining revenues over the past four quarters. Super expensive. Year to date, you're down 5%. That's not huge. You could get a 10% pullback on this one easily. Last year was up 46%. Declining revenues and the stock was up 46%. Target price, 197 Now, the, the most recent downgrade, Piper Sandler, they only brought their top price target from 220 down to 205 uh, The The one on January 3rd, which was yesterday, that one, DA Davidson, brought it down to 166 Now, Barclays brought it down to 160 so you're seeing lower price targets on this, but we've always had lower price targets and they've always said it's overvalued. Uh, Buffett just buys a ton of this and, and then uh, you know Apple buys their own stock back and retires it. So I'm not necessarily selling out of this. I'm not trimming it here. I still think it's a good buy. If it touches this 200 day on the uh, on the, uh, the the daily, I may trim some. I may trim some in my, my retirement account. That's not uh, that's not tax uh, events. So, but I wanted to make you aware of that downgrade. Another downgrade, SoFi from yesterday. Uh, SoFi stock took a huge hit yesterday. Algorithm got you out with a 20% gain yesterday. Um, probably should have seen it here where the, the button hook was starting. Uh, again, the algorithm won't time things. This one is extremely and quickly oversold. Today, it's down 0.84%. I would expect it to hold here at the 200 day at 812. If it doesn't, I think you're looking down here at probably $7.34 um, for a support level. That would be where my guess would be. But you've got this thing just sinking and diving. Uh, I think it's a good company. Just, you know, that they, they bring up that lower rates, and this was part of the downgrades, lower rates are going to hurt this company. And it's incredibly expensive. The forward PE is 108. This one was up 82% last year. Uh, it's down 17% in just, what, two, three days of trading? Um, the average target price is $9.12. I still think it's a $10 stock. Um, you can see the downgrade year underperformed. They brought their price target from $7.50 to $6.50. I think it's a good one. I don't think it's a horrible one. I, I think it's a good bet, but I probably wouldn't uh, would wait on it uh, just based on this algorithm getting you out right now. I'd probably wait for it to come down a little bit just to see if it does break this. If we start to get a gap fill on this one on the way up, I think you're fine pulling that one in. Uh, AXP was upgraded. This is American Express. They were upgraded um, with a price target of 265. Now, the algorithm doesn't have you out on this. Right now, it's still got you in. Uh, it is up 0.47. This is not one that you necessarily trade. This is, I mean, that's just a crazy move, but the move was because it was down near its 200 day, just starting to get back up. 
Look for a resistance around 197 or 200 if you do get into this. But AXP, if we go over here, it's not crazy expensive. It's a credit card company. Uh, MasterCard and Visa, I think, are cheaper. Um, you can see the, the PE is 17. The forward PE is 15. Last year, this was up 26%. Year to date, it's down 0.3. Uh, but let's look at Visa. Visa and MasterCard, look at their PE, 31, 23 for, for Visa. And if we go to MasterCard, uh, which is MA, 36, 29. I mean, you know, again, I don't think AXP is that bad of a, a buy. I think here with a $265 price point, uh, price target, I think you're good. Boyle, uh, what I noticed was that if we go over here to Finviz and you go down to the bottom left, you'll find your commodity prices. You'll find oil is up 0.4. But natural gas is up 4.42. Yesterday, Boyle was up again. And today we're up 3.42%. Look at this since the algorithm. Uh, if we just clear this one out because you were up 17% um, in 20 days, but the algorithm got you in down here at about 2571 on December 14th. Oh, stop. I don't want the text. We're going to put this one in uh, right here. You're up 32% now. 32% and you have confirmation. Do I think this one's getting up? I think this gap at 40 you know, I, I would say 40, 38, 40, probably within realm. It's not out of the que realm of possibility. This is a triple levered ETF. Understand, this is a decaying asset. This isn't something that you want to hold on to. So Boyle uh, is a good play right now. Uh, DraftKings, I sold out of this uh, late last year uh, in December when the algorithm kind of said, hey, it was on its way down, sold out this. Uh, once it lost its confirmation, um, I, I wanted to get out. Just said, hey, I can always get back in. Um, but I, I'm looking at that 200 day right now at 3198. That one right there, I think it's good. I've always said $30 is the swing on this. And when you get above $30, when you lose that confirmation and you get out, you just get out. Uh, now the 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 um, algorithm makes you 26% versus 23% buy and hold. You win 30% of the time. Your average win is 23%. So you have to know when to get in. I'm not saying get in right now, but I am looking at that 200 day and maybe this gap fill down to 29. If we get under 30, I'm loading up on it again. I'm just going to load up on it. You're at the end of the uh, the NFL season, uh, college football. The playoffs are next week. You're probably going to have some pretty good press on DraftKings. We just had some dude who turned $7,000 into half a million in New Jersey. Uh, here's CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike got you out with a 32% gain. This is a solid, solid company. I'm in at about 180. I think 185 is my average price point. If you look at this one on long term, I think you're fine here. And I said all time highs at 300. I think you're going to it. Um, you still have confirmation. Would I get in right now? No. But on this pullback, there's an opportunity to look to add to this. Um, you're under the nine day. You don't have confirmation. Your MACD has fallen quickly. You've quickly become oversold. Uh, right now, you're up 0.72. Look for this one to come back. Snowflake, same thing. I own this one. Uh, I trimmed a little bit of it when it got here to 200. Haven't trimmed it since. Uh, I still own some. I think my average is about 150. I'm not looking to trim it, but I'm looking to fill this gap down to 176. I'm looking at that golden cross as being, you know, the 50 day starting to move down again. We broke that. Look at the MACD, how quick it's falling. Now you've quickly come oversold. Your RSI is at 30. You're down 0.28%. Look for this one to have some type of bounce back, but understand it's expensive and we're in this range. Remember, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, months ago, I said, this is the range. 200 and it's coming down to 130 140 when you get under this line at 158 start buying that's where the 50 day is right now uh so i like snowflake there pan w same thing we got to 300 started turning over algorithm got you out with a 22 percent gain uh right now the algorithm on this one it only makes you 17 percent. you're providing some safety uh, buying and holding on this one 24 uh, months ago, you made 65%. This is the largest uh, cybersecurity company. Look at how quickly that MACD has fallen. Look at how quickly the RSI has fallen. You've quickly come to this oversold area. Now, am I buying in on the first time when the algorithm tells me? Only if I have confirmation. Only if I have confirmation. I was trimming. I'll take that money and I'll buy it back lower. 
AMD just got an upgrade uh, from KeyBank with 170. We'll go over to Finviz once I show you. It's turning over. Algorithm has not gotten you out yet. Look at this one. You had a nice 19% gain. Uh, and then you you wound up 19% gain just to the next uh, algorithm get it. Here, the MACD is turning over. It crossed down. You've created a gap above at 144. You are up 0.37%. Quickly became oversold. If you want to start playing the market and you want to start tri uh, just scalping these, you absolutely can because as the market goes down, there's going to be an opportunity to go up. Just remember, long-term trends matter. You want something that has higher highs and lower highs. You don't want something with higher lows and lower lows. You, don't, you want something in that long-term upward trend. Here's Marathon, uh, Marathon Digital Holdings, Mara. One of the most active stocks out there. This is up 1.41%. We saw that turnover. MACD, I'm sorry, the algorithm hasn't gotten you out. Look at that MACD quickly come down. You never got to oversold territory. I'd be very careful of this one. I do think it's a $30 stock again. We touched 30 up here. Uh, I absolutely should have sold. Uh, I may hold this one long term, but this one's a Bitcoin miner. It's going to go on Bitcoin. I do think that Bitcoin, um, the, the, the ETF, is going to have a b super, super positive uh, outcome with Mara in particular. Because remember what Mara does. All of the Bitcoin transactions, they are confirming. This is one of the largest. And what do they earn when they confirm? They earn Bitcoin. So as the price of Bitcoin goes up, the price of Mara should go up as well. As the transactions go up with the Bitcoin ETF, which makes it easier to buy and sell Bitcoin, that will benefit Mara. It is incredibly expensive. Mara is amazingly expensive. Um, they're not making money. They're losing $357 million. Uh, they have somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 million. They may dilute. Maybe. Not sure. You can buy any of the miners. But you can see October, uh, Bernstein initiated $8.30. Their average target price is $13.72, and you're trading at $23. So it's incredibly expensive. I would trade it. GBTC, we talked about this one. They are in talks right now um, with none other than JP Morgan in talks with Grayscale about Bitcoin ETF. Well, GBTC, you have confirmation. It's at 35. We're in this historic run. What I wanted to play you, uh, if you remember, Jamie Dimon said Bitcoin uh, is a crazy, crazy invest. Uh, he said it's just junk. Uh, don't believe anybody. Here, I'll include this link uh, in the newsletter, but I'll play it for you. On September 12th, Jamie Dimon says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire any one of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Dimon speaks, people listen. People listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. Yeah, no. Not he says it's a fraud. It says he'll fire anyone I'll that fire. buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying his it. His company is buying it. So, you're, it's just, I mean, so unethical. Yep. So That's Jamie Dimon. That's why I don't, I mean, listen, Jamie Dimon also was in charge of JP Morgan when they took Epstein's money. I'm just not a fan. Not a fan. He's our douche of the day. Complete douche of the day. Just don't like that guy at all. Uh, I do like, by the way, right now, oil. Uh, oil is up. We've got a couple of oil plays that are in play. Um, Exxon, which is in the core portfolio. I've got Exxon. 102, it's at 103. It's down a little bit. It's up 0.54, 54%. Um, you wound up getting it open at 104. I do think you get back to the 200-day at 107. It's not a huge move, but Exxon is one of those where I think you could probably hold it. Uh, for a while, if we look at the weekly, you're nowhere near the 200 day. So you may have some significant downside on this one if the price of oil continues to go down. Uh, there's another one in the, the cross up uh, in the scans that I like. Uh, CVX, kind of the same thing. I think you could buy this one, CVX, um, with the algorithm set of 145. But this one's closer to its 200 day right here at 155. Um, there is a gap up here at about 164. I don't think this is a bad one to, to buy if you want to hold it through the, through the year. 
uh, oil with the Mideast t- stuff, um, shipping. If you look at yesterday's newsletter, I included a link um, to shipping Maersk. Maersk and all the shipping uh, stuff. You can find all of the shippers in this article right here. Um, look at this. Just The list of shippers is right down at the bottom. So yesterday's newsletter has the list of shippers. Uh, I do think that it's an opportunity for you to get in there. I think oil is similar with the Mideast crisis. I think it's just, you know, if you want to trade it, you can trade it. I do own Devon. I do own Oxy. I own some of that stuff. I may buy Marathon Oil, which is the the cross-up today. Um, But I thought it was interesting to point out that I think CVX and XOM, uh, with the price of oil going up, might be an opportunity. Lily, Eli Lily. And let me see if I can find this real quick. Uh, Eli Lilly, I'll post an article to it from uh, from Seeking Alpha. Um, Eli Lilly just notified that, yeah, offer at-home delivery for weight loss drugs. This is the article that I'll include in the newsletter. This is huge. Um, and it's enormous because weight loss drugs are expected to be the... And I, I, I listened to a podcast yesterday about weight loss drugs. It's interesting because for the first time in history... Um, for the majority of human history, we've been at a caloric deficit. And now you've got a caloric um, abundance. And so I just think, you know, we're, we, and I agree with the podcaster, we're creating a solution to a problem that we've already, uh, already created. And we don't know the outcome of the problem we created versus just creating another problem, which is the pill. And the, but the, the Eli Lilly is trying to mask this, I should say. Um, they're launching a direct to home where you can get it directly from the company. It's called Lilly Direct. It means, so let me just put this bluntly, the list price of uh, Manjaro, $1,060. Eli Lilly Direct will sell it to you as a consumer for $550 directly. If you don't know, um, there's these things called pharmacy benefit managers, PBMs. And what traditionally PBMs do is they buy the drug directly from the company. You had to be a PBM in order to buy the drug from the company directly. In order to do that, you had to set up this PBM. Well, there could be seven or eight PBMs in the uh, in the mix. So between you and the actual drug manufacturer, there could be seven or eight PBMs. What do these PBMs do? They take a slice of the profit. So that $550 that uh, uh, Eli Lilly is willing to sell it to you for, they may sell it to a PBM for $552. But that PBM is going out and selling it to pharmacies for a $650. So they're making $100 uh, on every every dose of this medicine. Uh, now, with insurance, um, you know th- th- this uh, Manjaro costs you $25. So who's covering that? It's the drug companies. Uh, you know, again, Eli Lilly wants to make the 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 insurance companies pay for this. Uh, Eli Lilly is going to sell it to you for five hundred and fifty dollars with a, um, a doctor's prescription, or you can do go through your insurance for twenty five bucks. And you know what the insurance is paying five hundred and fifty dollars. So who's getting the money? The manufacturer of the drug, Eli Lilly. And and we're just in the beginning stages of this. It's huge. It's enormous. I, I really, really like this one. Uh, I will include in the newsletter, I took pictures um, of what happens the year after a 20% gain. And it's all from CNBC. I'll just post the pictures that it took on my TV screen. Uh, it's pretty significant because S&P 500 gains of 20% uh, aren't too rare. 26%. Uh, 20 per, of the, uh, well, of the S&P gains since 1928, 36% have been 20% or above. Uh, 2% have been 10 to 20%. And 15% have been t- uh, 0 to 10%. There's been 15% declines of uh, up to 10%. And 12% where they, the S&P went uh, over, down, down over 10%. So that's kind of interesting. S&P performance after a 20% gain. Up frequency, 65%. Down frequency, 35%. Average return, 8.9%. Average gain in up years, 18%. So 65% of the time, you get an up, uh, 18%. So back-to-back 20% gains for the S&P. Uh, there have only been one, two, three, four, five. Five, oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of them. Now, what's interesting, of those nine, we've had... Uh, 
one, two, three, four. Uh, not four of the nine have been since 19, uh, 1990. So, in fact, 1995, 1995, 19, uh, 1996, 1997, 1998, 1999, they were all up 20% or more. That was the, the beginning of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the dot-com crush, if you will. Uh, let's talk about social requests. Owls1710 asked me about NVIDIA, and I think he asked it on a very old video. Uh, and my apologies if I hadn't gotten to it. NVIDIA, you're in this range. I mean, this is the trading range that I've outlined for weeks now. This goes all the way back to August. And I said this is uh, between 505 and 405. I mean, 400 and 500, that's your trading range. Are you buying it here at 478? I don't know. I mean, you know, the MACD is kind of crossing down. The, the RSI is kind of getting up there. It, it's another trade. I think it's extended. You have your earnings coming up, I think, in February sometime. It's nothing that I temp, you know, I'm tempted to add to. You're below your nine day. Eh, it's just nothing. No, right now, I wouldn't do it. Do you want to hold this in your portfolio? Yeah, I do. I trimmed some at 500, but didn't sell it all. I think when you get to that 500, you're going to see significant resistance. And I don't think you get above that until we have some type of resolution of this uh, bull market pullback. So uh, Joe from Facebook, BITX has been my friend, got in at 998 um, share a few months ago. BTC was 26,000. BIT, uh, BITX, this is a, a Bitcoin strategy, two times lever. Two times levered on Bitcoin. Just got you in at 2250 on the algorithm. You're at 2426. If you think Bitcoin's going up, I mean, this is the crazy thing. Look at how much this is pulled back. BITX, uh, again, two times levered on the Bitcoin strategy. This is a great one, Joe. I love this one. Uh, and he's in at $9.80. So, I mean, think about that one. Uh, Fatima, Ben Shreve. What is the usage case of Bitcoin? Most governments are against it as it gives them lo uh, no less money control. Most people buying Bitcoin only to sell it higher. Do I miss something? Thanks in advance. Fatima, that's the whole point of Bitcoin is that it's not levered by government uh, man manipulation of currency. You can, you know, we talk about uh, the, the, the dilution of shareholders all the time uh, with things like, um, you know, uh, what, Peloton. Peloton, for instance, they don't have enough money to go on. They're going to need to dilute shareholders. That's what the government does. They dilute shareholders by just printing more money. What do you think our deficit is? That's essentially what the government does. And so Bitcoin isn't in that control. And yes, governments hate it. Yes, governments can outlaw it. They found a way around that. You think Chinese people don't invest in Bitcoin just because the Chinese government says that you can't? That's crazy. So I, I think you hit it on the head. What's the use case of it? The other thing is the blockchain is, you know, the blockchain has been incredibly beneficial. Now, Bitcoin, the trading of Bitcoin doesn't necessarily get you into blockchain and stuff like that. Blockchain is just kind of a, you know, the white paper that Satoshi wrote. But I, I do like that Bitcoin has held up and been around. Remember, shares of a stock are just what the market pays for it. Shares of art are just what the market will pay for it. Shares of Bitcoin are only what the market will pay for. If, if you don't have um, you know, volatility, if you don't have the risk, uh, if you're risk adverse and you don't want to hold Bitcoin, don't hold Bitcoin. We just saw Jamie, Jamie Dimon said Bitcoin is worthless. And you know what his traders are doing? They're trading Bitcoin on his news. So obviously somebody likes, when I you know, listen to billionaires, they're like, yeah, I got you know a few million bucks in Bitcoin. It's doing well. I just kind of forget about it. To me, it's an indication. Hey, I don't want to listen to a douche on the internet, but I do know Bitcoin has been around for quite a while. Do I think it's going to zero? No. Do I think it's going to 100,000 this year? No. Do I think it's going to half a million like Kathy Wood says or a million? No. I, I think Bitcoin is a trading tool that you can use and you can trade. It's as simple as that. I don't think there's a use case for it. Do I think people are, you know, the guy who bought a pizza for nine Bitcoins, that's worth like a billion dollars now or something way back in like, uh, what, 2017, 2016? Nah, he's regretting his decision. But, you know, you never know. You don't know that that's going to happen. So 
Uh, Jonathan from Spotify, uh, do you think LNG is a good idea? This is um, Chenier Energy. And I've said, hey, this is a good one. They basically take low-cost uh, uh, liquid natural gas and export it. You can see the MACDs just kind of hovering around as we sit here. Um, the algorithm has you out. You're using this 200-day as support level at 168. It's up 2% today. Um, I don't think there's any catalyst that's going to send this one flying uh, back up to 180. You're at all-time highs here. Um, your upside is probably limited, but you can see kind of a double top here at 182. I don't think it's a bad idea. I just think that, you know, again, you're probably just sitting there waiting for this one. Uh, if we look, I think the 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 dividend, it's 0.96, so it's not a great dividend. It's up 0.52 year to date. It was up 22% last year while natural gas was down. So it's, it's an interesting one. I think if you're interested in natural gas and you're interested in commodities, I think there's, this one's going to return a decent thing. But natural gas is just going down. So I'd be a little bit careful of this one. Bisco uh, from Spotify. Thoughts on CTSH. Seems like a fairly cheap stock for AI adjacent area. Started a small position as it's pulling back. Let's see. Um, CTSH. Let's look at this. Uh, CTSH Cognizant Technology. Uh, I don't know anything about this company. Looks like it's pulled back. You still got a gap down here to 73. Not horrible. Let's take a look at the long term of this one because it's probably, yeah, I mean, you have a significant um, uh, downturn of this one down to 57. You've crossed your 200 day. You've got a solid you know, weekly uh, confirmation above that nine day. Um, your all time highs are up here at 90. I don't think it's horrible. Let's see what the, the valuation is. CTSH um, right here. They do technology, information technology. P is 18, forward P of 16. Uh, average target price, 72. You're trading at 74. Uh, most recent today, Wolf Research, underperformed to peer perform, upgrade. December 14th, Barclays, upgrade underweight to equal weight, 61 to $75 price target. Your average price target is right around where you're trading. Um, insiders. Looks like they're just optioning exercise. They're selling at like 62. Nothing huge though. I don't think huge. I mean, I, I listen, I don't know what they do. I don't know. We can look at, uh, let's look at CTSH. Let's look at the quant rating on this one because uh, what, what Seeking Alpha can do for you is if you take a look at this, they're all saying hold. So I don't think it's it's great to buy it. I think it's just capitulating. If you look rank in industry, eight out of 26, the industry is top IT consulting and others. Uh, the top one is DPSI. So I, I would you know, look at DPSI. Let's see. Uh, quant rating buy. One year, it's down 25%. Uh, what do they do? TPSI, let's say. Uh, through its subsidi- engages in designs, consults, and implements mobility, enterprise solutions, and services. Provides managed professional services that enable customers to implement. Eh, I don't know. Doesn't get me excited. CTSH, I think you're up there. Dex from Spotify asked about GBX. I have no idea what this is. You guys come up with some strange names. Greenbrier Companies. Um, let's see. You got some gaps here. It looks like you just crossed your two. Your 200 day is moving negative, but your 50 day just, you had a golden cross here. 3579 is where the algorithm got you in back on November 2nd. So you're traveling up. You're up 25% from there. Uh, the algorithm makes you 22% over two years. You lose 5% if you just buy and hold. You got gaps all over this one. Um, it's a little bit extended right now. Looking at that MACD, it hasn't been up this high since it was up here. Uh, let's take a look at the long term of this one. You just kind of cross your, your, your 50 days crossing up on your 200 day. So it's just kind of getting back to where it was in 2021. At 45, uh, GBX, let's look at this one, GBX, um, Greenbrier Companies, $1.4 billion market cap, 23 PE, forward PE is only 12. You were up 2% year to date, 33% last year. Uh, average target price is 43. You're trading at 45. Most recent, uh, Susquehanna in October, neutral to positive, and they have a $50. I think your upside on this one is limited, uh, but you are in an upward trend. Uh, I'd probably wait for a pullback on this one um, because it has been, you know, 33% last year's nothing like the great, um, the great eight, but it is a good year. So I'd probably wait on that one. 
uh, George from uh, Spotify. Hey, Gary, happy new year. I know you're a technology bull, Apple especially, but how do you feel about TECS here in the short term? Capitalize on some January market uh, weakness. TECS, let's look at this chart real quick. Um, this is uh, Direxon Technology, bear three times shares. Um, so it's a bear three times. So the algorithm has you, this is triple levered ETF. Just understand it's a triple levered ETF. You have confirmation. I'm in SQQQ to diversify a little bit outside of technology. If you're looking to buy this one, um, I think you might have this $12.39 um, uh, gap in, in, in play right now. The only question I would have is, um, you know, put your stop losses in tight. Look at this run. I mean, if you just bought this, what the algorithm said on um, December 21st, uh, you're up 13% right now. That's a pretty good, in 14 days, 1% a day on a triple levered ETF, and you've got a gap below here. So you've got some type of gap that that is filling in. The Bollinger Bands are expanding out. You're outside the top of the Bollinger Bands. It's a little bit risky in my mind as far as, you know, do you really want to go that heavy in after you've had that big of a run up, um, specifically on the algorithm, and you've got these big candles? Those Bollinger Bands are expanding out. My guess is that this gap at 1241 might come into play. I don't think it's a bad play, to be honest with you, George, if you want to put some money in there. Um, but just understand it is a decaying asset. And so when you look at this long term, uh, technology has just been a super bull. I would not want to stay in this one long term. I would definitely do, like you said, uh, capitalize on some weakness in January. Uh, this week should be down. I probably wouldn't hold on to this over the weekend. We're seeing a little bit of a rebound today uh, in the markets. If I go over here to, let's say, market data, uh, the S&P is up. Uh, the NASDAQ is still down 0.08, but it's coming back. So we're seeing a little bit of a pullback, uh, pull up right now in the midday. Might be a little bit dangerous, but... I like it. I mean, TECS, you know what? I'm going to add this to our triple levered uh, ETFs, levered ETFs. I'll watch it. We'll add it to that list because um, that's a good one. I like that one. And I, I, TECL might be, yeah, TECL is the long one. Um, that's the one where I, I, I think your play, to be honest with you, since we've run so much, um, and I do have TECL in the long term. I think your play is not necessarily to get into TECS. I think your play on this one is to look when TECS starts to cancel and then get into TECL. In my mind, I think that's a better use of your money to be patient because you don't know how long this 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 um, pullback is going to take. We may get some news out of something. I mean, I'm seeing the market kind of turn around. Palantir's up freaking 1.74%. So I think, George, what I would probably rather do is uh, TECL. Wait for the, the – it's kind of like I did with uh, T, uh, TQQQ and um, uh, SQQQ. Wait for the turnaround. Wait for some confirmation. And then get TECL. I'll put the chart in there for TECL uh, for you in, in the newsletter. Scans. Um, Disney, it's down 1.53% today. Uh, we did get a cross up here at 91.37. Yeah, got a cross up. If you're interested in Disney, I think you can buy it. Uh, I think you get under 90. Right now it's at $90.24. I think you get in the 80s with an eight handle. We had Devin. Devin crossed up. It's it's part of this. It's just, you can see the MACD is kind of fluttering around. And since my, uh, my algorithm is based on the MACD, it's just another sign that, hey, we might, and I said it before, uh, this candle uh, right now, the high is 47.35. Look how it rejected off that 200-day right there. Um, I wouldn't expect this one. I, if the afternoon handle uh, candle seems to hold, again, you're, you're in a con confirmed state. The low is 46.58. That nine day is down at 46.29. So Devin, I think it's a good one. Uh, the one that I really like is MRO. If energy is going to continue, it's a strong move upward. MRO here at 24.93. I don't think this is a bad one to get. 
MRO has a dividend. Let's see what the dividend is. I think it's a good dividend, 1.67, so it's not crazy. Last year, it was down 3.59. That's not a bad pr- place to be for an energy company where energy was down last year. Uh, I think you get this one. If you can get it under 24.93, I don't think it's a bad price. Uh, the low on this candle is 24.66. So you're trading at 2473 right now. Uh, XLE, like I said, if energy can continue its uh, move upward, we did have a MACD cross up. We're right here at the 200 day. You're rejecting right off that 200 day. Just another one. 84 was the price to get in. You do have gaps down here. So be careful because energy might be coming down. We might, you know, people just don't want to trade in energy right now. Even though we have a mid east crisis, people are like, yeah, we've had this before, whatever. Uh, XLE Fang is another cross up. Uh, this is Diamondback Energy. Uh, it is not Facebook. Blah, blah, blah. And by the way, we heard M- Mark Zuckerberg is done selling uh, close to five hundred million dollars worth of Facebook he sold in the the last two months. So, but Fang another cross up. I mean, it's been a solid move upward. Uh, your RSI is a little bit high at sixty. Not not crazy about this one. I'd rather probably go into MRO. Uh, the other ones that I'll put in, I'll put in a few more, but Uvixi, uh, we talk about the VIX a lot and the VIX here, if I go in, uh, to seeking alpha and I look at the VIX, the VIX right now is at 13. And with this sell off, you haven't seen a pop in the VIX. A lot of people are saying, Hey, in order for this uh, sell off to be justified, we're going to have to see a big pop in the VIX. Well, we haven't seen it. In fact, it's down today by 0.43. Uh, Uvixi is down by 0.34. This is a triple levered ETF. You wait for confirmation. 887 is where it got you in. It's at 884 right now. SVIXI has been the play. This is a triple levered ETF short of the VIX. SVIXI has been the play. It's got quite the confirmation. Um, you can see now SVIXI got you in at 102. You're still sitting there at 101, but it's lost its confirmation. So I think this one's more likely to turn down and the VIX is likely to go up. That would mean you'd go to Uvixi. But because they are both decaying assets, Uvixi isn't going to shoot up the way that SVIXI is going to come down. Again, it's a decaying asset. So it's kind of like I told George, um, hey, you know, TECS might be a good play, but I think your better play is just to wait for the turnaround and then get back into TECL at the time. I think that's a better play rather than trying to time TECS. Try and time TECL because you've already had a little bit of a run in TECS. Um, So I I think that's the better play. Okay. Uh, Again, if you like anything that I do, it's all here on Linktree. Uh, You can get your deal on uh, TrendSpider. If you like the algorithm, again, I showed you the algorithm makes you, it takes emotion out of your trade. That's the thing. If you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to get out of this because I'm not sure if it's going to be high. Use the algorithm. If the algorithm's telling you there's a button hook there and it's about to turn over uh, and the algorithm suddenly says, hey, get out. That's your, your indication to get out. You can trade it on a bot if you want. You can create your own strategies. Mine is just a way for you to get started in strategies and trading. Remember, I always say this. You want a strategy. Create a strategy. My strategy used to be, uh, hey, I'll just look at the charts and see where it is. The algorithm changed me and it was a game changer. It just leveled things up for me. So understanding the MACD leveled things up for me. Understanding RSI leveled things up for me. TrendSpider is not plug and play. It takes work. It takes your ability to sit there for a couple of hours a day and understand what these charts say. Even with the algorithm, you could try it on on something like Google uh, where you see the algorithm uh, gets you, you know, the, the button hook, but it hasn't gotten you out. I think you'll be able to buy this under 130 again, but long term, it should not matter. If you don't have a position in Google, start it. I include all of this, by the way, uh, free on the newsletter. So you can see all these charts. At the very least, you should sign up for the newsletter because it's free. The paid version is the weekend version. And that includes much more uh, education, um, things of that sort, and specifics. But uh, if you want a subscription in TrendSpider, if I'm ever on vacation, you can do all these scans yourself. Because I include the scanners, I include the watch list, and I include all of the algorithms, the 65-minute and the 4-hour. And I'll include anything else that I have, like uh, you know the, the the Apple one that Jason created. 
Um, so if you have any questions, you can hit me up. Uh, the process, by the way, signing up for TrendSpider is you sign up for TrendSpider using this link, and then you email me at dailystockpick3 at gmail.com. The email is right here on Linktree. Uh, if you want Seeking Alpha, you guys saw, I set an alert, and this, this was what I wanted to do. Um, I went and, and looked at uh, NVIDIA. I think I looked at NVIDIA. I think that, that was the one that I looked at. Um, and I went to the quant because NVIDIA says hold. And I went to the quant and I said, oh, it's a, it's a hold. Let me go and look. It's ranked eight out of 66. What's a top one uh, in this one? Uh, and no, it wasn't. SM anyway, it came up with SMCI. I forget what the, the stock was, but it came up with SMCI. Uh, and it's number one out of 26. Uh, oh, I was looking at Apple. That's what I was looking at. I said, Apple's 3.42 on the quant in Seeking Alpha. What's a good one to get? SMCI came up. And so I clicked here on SMCI in Seeking Alpha, and I said, you know, I want to know when to sell this one. Well, I put in an alert for when the, the quant goes to hold from strong buy, and it's going to text me. You don't need to watch a chart. You don't need to do anything. You can set up this alert in Seeking Alpha. So if you get Seeking Alpha Premium, I give you a $50 off right there on the link. And I said it before, I only have two brokerages. I have Fidelity and I have Webull. I love trading in Webull. Webull is the third link here. Uh, you get up to 75 free stocks. You can click right there. It is great. I, I love the app. If you're, if you're one of those people who's on your phone most of the time and you want to trade, Fidelity is annoying as F to trade in their app. I love Webull. I love it. Love it. Uh, if you are spending anything more than $20 a month for your phone bill, uh, I'm going to give you $20 off on your first month and check out the plans. It's $20 a month. You're saving 20. It's usually 25. I'm paying 25 right now. You'll save 20. You'll, you'll get it for 20 for the next 24 months for the next two years, 20 bucks a month. If you can't work with deprioritized data, which I've never found to be a problem. They say it's less than 1% of the time. I've never had a problem. Never. But you can go up to $35 a month. Uh, yeah, and you get $20 off your first month. So that's $15 for your first month on the, the, the Visible Plus. Um, plus, they have great deals on phones, uh, upgrade program. You can upgrade to the iPhone 15. I think you get $10 a month off for 24 months and you save $240. Um, I really, really like this company. It, it is phenomenal. So it, click on that link, save $20 on your phone bill. Uh, if you're thinking about getting a Tesla, remember the $7,500 uh, rebate, tax rebate, now comes off the car. So um, I was looking at a Model Y this weekend. I, I you know, trade in my. What's keeping me in Model Three is that I have full self driving. I bought it for five thousand uh, bucks. AT and T at your house, mobile phone. If you want anything, AT and T, I've got it there. Empower is the app that I'm using now instead of Mint. Um, so sign up there if you want to track your stuff. If you want to follow my trades? I'm on Savvy Trader. If I, you know, I give you any benefit, you can sign up here. I'd rather see you just buy the uh, the paid newsletter, to be honest with you. I think you get stuff. I think I sell enough stuff that you don't necessarily have to tip me. I think by supporting me, you either get the tools that I use in order to, to up your trading uh, or you, you you know get on Webull and start trading with me, and provide me screenshots with all your gains. Um, you get visible phone service. I mean, there's tons of stuff to support me. So, okay, I will be back tomorrow. Take care. Say bye. The trading bell, my heart starts to pound. Daily stock pick trading podcast in my ears, guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter, let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer, no room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell, my heart starts to pound. Daily stock pick trading podcast. My hopes and fears.